Hey, what's up, Stan Ray here. And today I'd like to welcome you to my garage where I'm gonna show you how to tune your skis with some helpful tips and some incredible B-roll. Let's go. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why is a free skier like me that never tunes his skis trying to show you how to tune their skis? Well, maybe you didn't know that I ski raced for 15 years, three of which I spent on the Canadian Ski Cross national team, and one of which I was actually a wax for the ski cross team. Well, now that you know my background, let's get into it. A few tools you're gonna need for the job are an iron, some wax, a file guide, a base bevel guide, a spring clamp, a couple diamond stones, one rougher and one finer, a file, a scraper, a cup of water, some brushes, and some paper towel. And of course, a cheese sandwich. My preference, brie with homemade sourdough. First thing we're gonna wanna do is get our brakes up. So I'm taking an elastic band, putting it around my brakes and over top of the binding, and I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna put a glove on for protection. And then we're gonna take a brush. Well, first of all, actually, we're gonna take a bit of towel, paper towel, wipe the skis down, get all that water off from the day, and we'll just grab a quick brush and we'll just, just a quick pass with a brass brush and it'll take all that dirt out of our base. Again, just a quick wipe. Get all that out of there. And first thing we're gonna wanna do is deburr our skis. The reason we take a diamond stone and take the burrs off our skis is because we want the ski to cut cleanly through the snow. So we're gonna take one of our wet stones here from the water and we're gonna put it like so on our file guide with our spring clamp and we're gonna run it. We're gonna put this flat against the base and we're gonna run it up and down with a fair amount of pressure. You don't have to go crazy, but, and we can go back and forth as stones can cut both ways. You'll work that tip to tail all the way down. And if you feel that there's a little burr somewhere, you can work that spot a little more. And once that's done, put that down and we can move on to doing the same thing, but on the base side edge. So we're gonna take that same 200 grit, maybe I'll put a little water on it again, lubricate it, and we're gonna put it in our base bevel guide, sorry. This will sit on the ski like that against the edges. And we're just gonna run that down this way. This will take the burrs off the base side edge. And then you can feel it with your glove hand. And once that feels nice and smooth, you can go ahead and take that off, put it back in the water, and we're ready to start sharpening our skis. So now I'm just gonna take that, wipe the edge off, and I'm gonna take my second cut file. I like to use the second cut file because it does still take a little more edge off and it just makes it easier to keep it sharper with a second cut file. We're gonna take our spring, uh, spring clamp, and we're gonna put the file a bit of an angle. So it sits like that on the, uh, on the file guide. And what we're gonna do, unlike the stones, the file only cuts on the pull stroke, so you can't go back and forth with that. Um, so we wanna glide slowly up and push on the pull down. Just glide slowly up, push on the pull down. And you wanna start with smaller strokes on your first take or two, first pass. And then we'll come back and our, on our last uh, pass, we're gonna do longer strokes. Then you can feel the back of your hand to see if the edges are sharp. You can also check with your nails. If it takes off a bit of nail, it's pretty sharp. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our finer stone now and we're gonna polish the edge. Now the reason we polish the edge, just wipe that down quick, is what we've just done, we've taken the stone, we've taken all the burrs off, then we've taken the file and sharpened the edge. And now what we wanna do is take off tiny little burrs that the file left and a finer stone also hardens your edge, which will make it 
sharper longer and last longer and be a little more durable. Everyone enjoys it when it lasts longer, right? And just like the other stone, we can go back and forth here, run that tip to tail. Make sure you go running down the whole ski. I'm kind of going fast and going over it, but um, that's how you should be doing it. And then you should end up with a really smooth edge and fairly sharp, which is great. And now we're ready to wax. Now waxing, we'll probably, we will put it back on the vise. We will take our brass brush and we're gonna brush out the ski. This will pull out a lot of dirt or anything that's in there, or maybe a little file shavings. And again, I like to just use my paper towel and wipe down the ski. And I also like to wipe down the iron. Um, I've had this iron preheating to the set temperature for your wax. Usually if you buy wax, ski wax, it'll have the recommended temperature for it. And you can either do this two ways. Some people like to rub a little bit on and then kind of do like that and cover the whole ski. I don't personally do this method, but I do think it's a good idea because um, if you go too slow, there's a possibility to burn your edge. And if you coat the whole base like this beforehand, you'll be less likely to do that. But I usually just take it and I like doing little S shapes, like I'm skiing lines down a mountain down and then I figure eight them on the way back up just like so. The wax down, I like putting wax down actually on a box, not back on the table, so then it doesn't get like foul shavings and a bunch of dust on it. And then I take my iron and I just work it back and forth. You can go as fast or as slow as you want. Yeah, you don't wanna go too slow, that's, that's not true. For the first pass, you can go back and forth and kinda get it on the whole entire base. But once you get going, you wanna leave a six inch trail uh, behind you of melted wax. And I'll show you what I mean in a second here once I get this. And I see a lot of people doing circles with the irons. I personally wouldn't recommend it because say a little piece of filing falls off your apron or you have a little piece of dirt in there and that you're now swirling it on the ski you're now that little rock or pebble is now gonna be swirled on your skis and you're gonna make that mark into your base. Where if you're just going back and forth, yeah, you might have a little cut that goes in line with the ski and it won't be as big of a deal. You can go slowly on your way back and you don't want much more than a six inch trail here. So about that, any more than that and you risk burning your base. And I usually go do three passes once I have it on. So I go once down, back up. And there we go. So when people are done waxing, most people turn their iron off, but I actually like to keep mine on because uh, I learned a neat little trick from my friend, uh, Riley Lebo a few years ago. You take paper towel, you give your iron a little wipe so you get rid of the wax and you prop it up like this, kind of upside down so the iron's facing up. And this is where the cheese sandwich comes into play. So you're gonna take that, put it right there. And you're just gonna let that sit while we uh, scrape and brush the ski. All right, now we're gonna grab our scraper. Um, and I did forget, when you're done waxing, usually you should actually take your scraper and there's little corners on them like this. And that's to grab, put them on the uh, edges and actually scrape your edges. So let's say you, you, you don't scrape your skis right away, you leave them for more than 10 minutes, that they don't create rust on the edges. Um, just if a little moisture gets stuck in between the wax and the edges, it'll create rust. So you can go ahead and do that if you like on both sides. And then you're ready to scrape. Now, scraping, I always like to scrape tip to tail, personally. Um, so you start at the tip, and you'll work your way down. I'll do it in the middle of the ski just to show you. But um, you want your fingers on each side of a scraper. This is a triangle scraper. You can have a rectangular scraper. And then you're gonna want your two thumbs at the back, and you're gonna create an angle 
like so. You don't want to try and scrape like this. Scrape at an angle and then you'll be able to apply a fair amount of pressure so you'll be able to get that wax right off your ski. And if you did a good job waxing and you didn't leave clumps everywhere, it'll make it much easier to scrape. Especially if you got cold wax. This is pretty easy as this is warm wax so it comes off fairly easy. And you're gonna again want to do this tip to tail. Once you're done that, you're gonna wanna grab your brass brush. A brass brush also only has one direction. It has an arrow on it, and that's because the bristles are actually angled a little bit, so you're not digging into the base, you're brushing down the base. So you're gonna take that brush, I usually put it on a bit of an angle, put both hands on it, and then you can really brush all that wax out of there. And once you're done that, this isn't needed, but you can grab a nylon brush or even a horsehair brush if you have both. You can do a pass with a nylon and a pass with a horsehair. Again, it's not needed, but it does leave you with a nicer polish on your base. And once all that's done, you can take your paper towel, maybe grab a clean one here, and you can just wipe that ski and you're left with a nice polished base, ready to ski. Now, not only do we have our skis all prepped to fly down the slopes, but we also have a perfectly cooked grilled cheese sandwich ready to be eaten. Mmm, <laughs> mmm, so good. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some good tips out of there. And just give me a like. Don't be afraid to leave a comment in the comment section below. And if you like this channel, subscribe. And I'll see you next time when we're skiing on the slopes. Keep on shredding, shredders. Mm.